Hello, hello, my name is Rhonda Poner. I'm the band director at Edison Middle School and I'm here to show you how to use the all new Flipgrid. So let's get started. All right, I have my screen sharing. We're gonna go ahead and go to Flipgrid. So flipgrid.com and it says educator sign up. So if you're not signed up for Flipgrid, you're gonna go ahead and click that on, put your credentials in using your HISD school email and you are good to go. I've already joined, so I'm gonna go ahead and click educator login. It's going to take me to my platform. All right, so I have two groups. They are formerly known as grids. Um, they're called groups now. I just created one right now a moment ago because I'm doing you know uh, these videos. But to create a group, you simply add whatever uh, name you want to have. Let's say music, Edison Music, or Edison Band, or Edison ELA, seventh grade, whatever topic you want to do. And it gives you your join code. I would suggest that you, um, I'm going to go ahead and just put something in there for now. Okay, maybe I'm not going to actually do it, but you would hit the school email. What's really important about this is that you use the HISD email, but remember, students have a different email. Theirs is at online.houstonisd.org, okay? And you can also enter a password for parents or other community members from Edison that they can access if you want to include them as well. So then you would hit next and you would create your, your grid. Obviously, I'm not gonna do it because I've already done that. So let's go ahead and jump into these grids. All right, so this is one I just created a moment ago and I went ahead and I transferred all of my, my videos over from last time. So there's no responses except the one I just did as a, a test run. But we're going to create a topic, and it's really cool. Let me put this away. So to add a topic, let's say um, you're trying to get to introduce your students, to get to know each other or whatever. So you want to have this um, say hello or, you know, say hello to the class. Or you might want to say something cool like, who are you? Okay. The prompt, you're going to tell them what they need to do. So you want to say something like, Share your name, um, favorite hobby, and your favorite food with the class. Don't forget to provide feedback to another peer and upload your video to the LMS assignment. Now I say LMS assignment, because um, last year I used Google Classroom and Microsoft Teams, but you can use Schoology, Canvas, one of those two, the hub. They're going to upload their recorded video to that assignment for you to officially grade. Okay, and I also like to put a couple of reminders in there. So, reminder, use proper etiquette. Okay, it's very important that they demonstrate good etiquette. Number two, remind them that they have to provide feedback to another peer's video. And number three, um, copy and paste your embedded video to your assignment. Okay, just a couple reminders. Now, I don't think it takes two minutes to do all of that, so I'm gonna give them one minute. You've got from 15 seconds to 10 minutes to do so, so we're gonna go ahead and do one minute. Closed captions, maybe you're teaching a Spanish class or whatever, you can have it to where the closed captions are any language. That's really cool. Obviously, ours is going to be English, or you can just turn it off altogether. Video moderation, I highly recommend you do this. This way, you can vet the videos to make sure that they have appropriate content in there and that everybody's using appropriate language. We don't want to have any instances of bullying or something that's inappropriate, okay? So this way, when you vet the videos, it's going to come to you to review. And if you find that it's appropriate, you can click it from hidden to active, and that way the other students in the class or the community can see it. Media source, you can add anything here. You can add a YouTube video, you can record your own video, you can upload a video, you can put an image or an emoji or anything that you want there, Nearpod, any kind of topic that they have here, you can add to your video. For example, I'm gonna record one real quick just to show you how to do this. Okay, so you can have several options. You can upload a clip, near a video, you can take off the audio and just do like a little 1920s thing or record your screen. Okay, I'm just gonna do regular recording. And you also can have effects. So effects like that, this is cool because you can have filters. You can change your filter to any color you want, make it all crazy, you know, like that. Or if you want, you can have frame like breaking news, you know, like, hey, breaking news, I'm gonna do that one. 
And you can have other effects if you want to stick some emojis up in there, you know, and have a happy face. And so we'll use that one. We'll put that up in the corner. Um, ooh, let me go back and change this uh, filter. So I'm going to, no filter there. Okay. And then I'm going to go ahead and uh, you can put some text in there if you want and say, hello, you know, and you can kind of pretty much put that anywhere. You also can add in some drawing. You can draw something if you want to do that. You can put a board if you want to have a white board or any color board. And this is the cool thing, split screen. You move this over and look, boom, you see that? Okay, so you can go back to the drawing. If you want to write something and say, you know, let me go ahead and click that on. I'm gonna draw, let's do this, let's see thickness. So, you know, draw something, hello, you know, whatever. Um, you can do that, okay? And uh, you can put a photo if you want. So that's really cool. So we're not gonna do a photo. But anyway, you can flip the camera. So I'm gonna do a response and I'm I'm going to go ahead and do this. Counts you down. Hello, my name is Miss Poner, and I love karate, and my favorite food is Peter Piper pizza. Woohoo! All right, so you've done that. It's gonna play it for you. You click next. Hello, Hello my, my name is Miss Poner, Poner, and I love karate, and my favorite food is Peter Piper pizza. Woohoo! All, right. All right, so if you Hello. like that, you go ahead and click this on. And again, you can add more effects if you want, you know, some stickers or, or, or whatever it is you want to put on there, another emoji or who knows, whatever you want to do, you can add all of that on there. Um, they have tons of emojis. And, and one thing I like is they have sign language this year. So like these are all the letter A's and B's and C's. And that's really cool for um, students who are, to have maybe a, a auditory uh, impairment or whatever. I mean, it's really cool. I mean, just to spice it up and make connections with people. So there's a lot of cool stuff that you can do on there as far as adding things and different folks. But let's, uh, I'm just going to put maybe this. Okay. So put that there. Okay. All right, cool. And then it makes you take a selfie so you can smile. All right. If you like that, you can add more effects. And if you're good with that, you click next. It uploads your video. It says complete. Boom. So now we have the um, media thing right there on the assignment. All right, so let's do more topics real quick. Again, right here, you can add this to have other people join in. But for now, I think, you know, to get started, just have your own class. Um, you can add a link if you have an assignment, like a Google Doc assignment or OneNote or something, you can add that into this. Um, you can also schedule your assignment. Let's say you want to have it scheduled for October 19th, and then you have it on that day, it'll unfreeze it and then October 19th, the students will be able to see the topic and then they can answer it. And that way they're not trying to do the assignment early. Okay, so notifications, I would go ahead and say turn that off because your phone will be blown up or your email if you have that on. Download and share. You want to decide if you want your students to download and share their selfies and that way they can keep a copy of themselves. This is a new feature. We didn't have it last year. Um, another thing is that you can have uh, allow them to do filters and stickers and stuff, which I would recommend you do because it makes it more fun and exciting. And also video editing, they can trim, delete, rearrange the clips or whatever. This is where you get that creative component in because students are excited about being creative and that increases in engagement. You want your students engaged. So I highly recommend that. Video comments allow them to make comments to their friends on their videos. Again, that's the essential skills feedback component where they're evaluating and providing constructive feedback or praise to another peer's video. And you wanna kind of have that. On a video count, I would recommend maybe, unless you know your class really well or their older group of kids like eighth grade or something, I would go ahead and turn that off because you don't want them to see that Billy Joe Bob has 153 comments or 153 views and poor little Susie only has two. So, I mean, for that kind of purpose, I would go ahead and turn off the video count. You could have the same argument for likes, like, you know, if you want to have some that, you know, have likes or not, that's up to you. You're going to have to decide that you would know your students. Allow students to have sticky notes where they can put little sticky notes up on there. Um, basic feedback, custom feedback. I would suggest you create a rubrics. I do a quick, easy rubrics where um, I, I tell them you have to answer the questions, provide feedback to appear, upload video to Microsoft Teams, The Hub, Google Classroom, Schoology, Canvas, wherever you're using. 
um, have them do that. I put the minimum score as 50 because if at least they're trying to do the work, then they have at least a 50. If they didn't do anything, okay, that's different, but it's harder to make up a zero than 50. And then it goes up from there. So you kind of update that. And um, yeah, you can, if you want to have that setting for all of your topics that you do, you click save changes to my default and it will go for all of them. You create the assignment. Now, here's a cool thing. Last year I used Google Classroom. All I had to do was click this on. We're not using it this year in HISD, but you choose a class. Let's say I choose beginning band class and you choose the action. You can have it as a create assignment, ask a question, make an announcement, whatever. We're going to create an assignment. Go. Now, here's a cool thing. I can choose to have more than one class do this assignment. I just put the title, you know, introduce yourself or whatever title you want to put there. Okay. And then just tell them like something like complete the following activity by clicking on the flip grid code below. All right. Please follow the rubrics. Now, I would suggest that on uh, the hub or Microsoft Teams, Google Classroom, or wherever you're using, also include rubrics there. And that way, that gives the students a guideline on what to use in order to get a 100, 90, 80, whatever grades that you put there. And that way, they are in control of what grade they want to get. All right. So the assignment I put for both my classes, all students, um, the points are 100. The due date, let's say I want it due on the 17th. And then I always put 1159. So they have right up until midnight almost to get that in. The topic, you can choose the topic as introduction and you hit the assignment. Boom. Now it's creating the assignment in Google Classroom. You can also do that in Microsoft Teams and on Remind, as you see, it has that. Or you can go ahead and hit that embedded code and put it on the hub or whatever LMS platform that you're using. So to view, to see what that would look like, I would click here and under beginning band, there's that topic right there. And it tells them that it's due Monday at 1159. So they click it on. They do the instructions. They see complete the following activity by clicking on so and so forth. They click that code. It's going to ask them to join with Google or Microsoft Teams. They hit Microsoft Teams because HISD email is Microsoft. So they hit that. Obviously, I'm a student, uh, a teacher, so I just click the one I have. Now, this is what the students see. Okay, so they read, share your name, favorite hobby, and your favorite food with the class. Don't forget to provide feedback to another peer and upload your video to the LMS assignment. And it reminds them, proper etiquette, provide feedback, you know, take your embedded link and put it on the assignment. And it shows them kind of like an example. So they can click this. Hello, my name is Miss Poner, and I love karate, and my favorite food is Peter Piper pizza. Woohoo! Right. See, so they see that. And then they kind of get an idea of what they can do. Now, remember, all of this is going to be moderated because you want to check to see if the language is appropriate and all that. So they click on the response and they do their own thing. Now, maybe they don't remember, wait a minute, what do I have to put in my video? So they look and they click on the card and it says, who are you? Share your name, favorite hobby and your favorite food. OK, I got it. All right. So they, they understand that. And then they can either upload a video that they prepared on their own or any of these or they can just Click this, make their own video. Hey, I really like this assignment. Anyway, my name is Billy Joe Bob, and I like to ice skate, and I'm on a hockey team up in Minnesota, and my favorite food is chicken wings. Something. Okay. And so they kind of can make effects on there, like you did on yours, all that same stuff. They hit next, it reviews it. Hey, if they like it, then they make a selfie, you know. They don't like the selfie, redo it. Okay, so they can redo it. Okay, upload it. They put their name, anything they want, they submit it. Boom. Now, here is the URL code for it. So all they have to do is copy. They can copy and paste this to their stuff. So they'd have to click that. There's that code up here. And that's where they would copy and paste it to the, the LMS. Okay, but um, right here, they can download their video or their selfie and have a copy of it themselves. So it's pretty cool. So good. Now, it says uh, video submitted. Your video will be hidden until approved by your educator. So let's go and look what that looks like on my side. So I'm going back on my side. Everything's all set. So um, let's go ahead and refresh this because we already did one. And it says, boom, somebody did a response already. And look, it says hidden. So what I would do as a teacher is I would listen to it. Hey, I really like this assignment. Anyway, my name is Billy Joe Bob. 
and I like to ice skate, and I'm on a hockey team up in Minnesota, and my favorite food is chicken wings. All right, so say I like that. I think it's cool, and I'm like, I can provide feedback, written feedback, and I can do private comment that just this person will see, and I'll be like, Billy Doe Bob. I love your video. I did a lot of this last year. I did mostly written comment, but you can do a video comment as well. Um, you know, something like glad to have you in class. All right. And then you can email that to the students. You click email and um, you can also record feedback as well. Okay. You can edit some stuff, whatever it is you want to edit about you, you can put that on there. All right. So if you like the video, you can go ahead and click active. And then that way other students can see it. You can also make when you when you do the text thing, by the way, the feedback, it's going to send it to their email. OK, so they'll get it at their HISD account. I didn't click it because, you know, whatever. Um, OK, I'll do it just so you can see. See, it says feedback sent. And that way, you know, hey, did I provide feedback? You can also record a video. OK. And same thing, you can record a video response. Hey, you know, blah, blah, blah. And do all of that if you wanted to do that. So you have that option. All right, cool. So let's go to the discovery. The discovery used to be Disco Library. This, you can create a topic and share it with other people. Let's say you like the topic that you created, go ahead and click on there and, and put your topic in the, the Disco thing. So we're gonna do this where I did one right here. So who are you? I can click on actions and add to discovery. You do that, you select what grade level, middle school, let's say I'm doing music, so music, you kind of share with other teachers how you're gonna use it, you know, this topic, you know, blah, 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 blah. And I would I would provide what you're doing as far as they can do feedback and copy the link to their LMS and, you know, blah, blah, blah. Tell them how you're using it, whatever. And then you can, yeah, you just share it and that's it, or whatever, and you add to discovery and they'll see if it's approved and they like it and they'll, do it or not. But um, yeah, so that's another way you can do. On discovery, I have quite a few topics. I've added 25, as you can see. And so here are all my topics that other people can use. And they've used it quite a bit, which is really cool. Like, for example, my identity, 91 people have used my topic. And so as you can see here, I kind of tell them how to how to do the video or whatever. Here's the, the instructions. They can add, they can put add topic. It'll go to their um, Flipgrid, and they can kind of modify it for their class. So they can have it to where maybe they're using Canvas or, or whatnot, and they can make those modifications to fit their needs. So it's really cool. Um, but these are all the topics. If anyone wants to use them in the entire world, they can. The activity, it shows you what your activity is doing, how many uh, videos you've made, how many topics you've created, uh, you know, how many views there have been. And you can see I'm a Flipgrid level two uh, certified Edu educator, so that's pretty cool. But anyway, it shows you a lot of cool stuff. Mixtapes, you can have stuff like this where I created the power of music and I have a bunch of different studio uh, students' videos from last year. And you can take this and you can share this link and put it on Twitter or whatever and have the community involved or on the school website or whatnot or the Edison community or parents and stuff. And other people can view videos that, of course, get permission from the students if you can use their video. I'll, I always made per got permission first before I posted a student's video on Twitter because it's very important, you know. And um, once you do that, you can share that and have other people and make it kind of a community thing, which is really cool. Shorts, you can create a short by having a, up to 10 minutes on how to do an assignment or whatever, you can create that. And once you create it, um, let's see right there, I created the video on how to do something, then you can take the embedded link, copy it and put it in your assignment. And then the student can look at that to see how to do it. This is great for parents who don't know how to use the hub or how to access assignments or to use Flipgrid or Edpuzzle or whatever other thing you're using, you can make a Flipgrid short video, share that link with your parents, either on Microsoft Teams through the communication aspect or through an email or whatever it is you do. And that way they can view it and kind of get an idea of how to do it. Cause you can record your screen and show them like what I'm doing right now, record your screen and show the parents how to do that so they can help their students and give them support at home. So that's really cool. Grid Pals is cool. You can uh, go on any grade level, subject, middle school. You can choose a subject, uh, arts, math, science, whatever, English, and connect with other educators in the United States or even wherever and exchange information. That's really cool because you have a collaborative thing going on, and I like that. So that's how you do all of that. Um, this is asynchronous learning 
where that means is that you can make the assignment and the student will do the assignment on their own. Um, and it's not like where your Microsoft Teams in a virtual class and everybody's there at the same time. So they're gonna do this on their own and get it in by the due date. So it's asynchronous. So that's a good thing. You have all of these cool effects and um, yeah, there's one more thing I wanna show you that's really important and really cool. So check this out. If you have a Spanish uh, learner and there, or someone who maybe struggles with reading, this immersive reader is the bomb. Click that on and they can have it read to them. Share your name, name favorite, favorite hobby, hobby, and, and your, your favorite, favorite food with the class. class. Don't, Don't forget, forget to provide feedback, feedback to another peer. peer. All right, so they can do that. They can also highlight stuff to make it even better for them. Like if they want to know what the nouns are, now all the nouns are highlighted. Or they want to see what the verbs are, all the verbs are highlighted or anything like that. So that's really cool. They also can make it bigger if they're visually impaired. They can have it bigger so that the text is bigger or smaller, doesn't matter. They can use whatever font they want or the spacing. They can have it all squished together or they can space it out. They can have different themes. Um, let me move my picture. Um, they have different colors that they want to use. If they want to make it purple, a darker screen, maybe the, the white is too bright for them and they can kind of make it a little bit more better or they, they like it, bam, right in their face. They can do all of that. Um, Here's a cool thing, choose the language. So let's choose Spanish, but Latin America, because we have a lot of Guatemalan uh, students. So we're gonna choose that one, the entire document. Boom, there it is. Now they can listen to it. Comparte tu nombre, tu pasatiempo favorito y tu comida favorita con la clase. No olvides proporcionar comentarios a otro par y subir tu video a la asignación de LMS. So the cool thing about this is that if the, the Pictionary, the Piction Dictionary, you see that. So they click this on. It shows them that clase means class, and they can click in here. Clase. Or in English. Class. So that's a great support for your L students, and I think it's awesome. Or students who might be dyslexic or need some sort of language support. I think that's a great idea. So there's no excuse for students to say, I didn't understand the assignment. Wrong again, boom, there it is. Immersive Reader is your best friend. We also have Immersive Reader in Microsoft Teams. I don't know about the Hub, the Hub is really archaic. Anyway, um, if, since we have Chromebooks, they can do an extension of the unofficial Immersive Reader on the Chromebook as an extension, and it provides the same service. So I think that's really great. Um, to see it as a student, to make sure that your topic looks good, as a sneak peek, you can click this on, and this is what the student will see. And if you like everything you see there, okay, good, that's fine, you know, um, yeah, boom. And as you can see, it's active, blah, blah, blah. So you have a chance to, to make it active or you can make it hidden so they can't see the assignment. If you don't want them to get to it too soon, you can do that, okay? You can share it again to any of these platforms, Microsoft Teams, Remind, Google Classroom, or the QR code or copy it and put it in the hub or whatever LMS that you're using. So there's a lot of cool things. All right, well, that's it. And I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you learned something. There's so much to do with this. Um, yeah, I love it. Flipgrid is the way to go. Y'all have a great year. And if you have any questions, email me at rponer at houstonisd.org or you can text me. You already know my number. I will put it in the chat. Thank you and good luck this year. Bye-bye.